You want to check this row here? Sure. This forest clearing in a park near Asheville may hold one of the last hopes for restoring an icon to the forests of the eastern United States. Andy uh, came out and fertilized these seedlings a week or so ago. The seedlings are American hemlock, and there are big plans for these little trees. This one's looking good. Number one, we're establishing a new hemlock stand. We've had a lot of hemlock mortality in this part of North Carolina due to the woolly adelgid. So we're putting some hemlocks back where there, there used to be hemlock. Also, we're providing a new hemlock stand where we hope to establish predators that will feed on the adelgid. And here's why those seedlings are so important. North Carolina's forests were once lush with majestic hemlocks like this, but then an exotic insect called the hemlock woolly adelgid invaded the area. The insects were accidentally introduced in Virginia through the importation of Japanese hemlocks. Adelgids were spotted at the North Carolina-Virginia border in 1995. North Carolina's hemlock stands were devastated within 10 years. The adelgids settle at the point where the needle attaches to the twig, sucking the sap from tender shoots. As the tree is depleted of carbohydrates, it stops making new growth. So it won't make a new flush of foliage when it's been very heavily infested. And as the tree fails to produce new growth, that actually causes the adelgid population to decline because the adelgid doesn't have any new foliage to settle on. That gives the tree a temporary break. So then eventually the tree will produce new foliage, but the adelgid is still in the stand. It comes back. So the tree can go through this cycle only so many times. The hemlock trees usually die within five to ten years of being infested. We only found a handful of hemlocks in this part of the forest, and the trees we found are not doing well. This branch has been heavily infested by adelgids in the past. You can actually see some evidence of, of older generations of adelgids on here. And the stress of that infestation has caused many of these tips to die, so this branch is not producing new growth. The challenge for foresters is that the adelgid is only about one millimeter long and essentially undetectable except for its white egg casings. The barely visible black spots, you see, are the adelgids. For the most part, the insects stay inside the white waxy material on the branches, feeding and laying eggs. Trouble is, by the time the casings are visible, the tree has already been invaded. The hope for the hemlock, then, is found in another insect, the predator beetle. No, we, no, oh, oh, there he went! He flew. He <laughs> flew under the branch. Okay. Oh. Predator beetles eat woolly adelgids. There have been promising results from tests in which hemlock trees had been saved when predator beetles were released into their branches. The question remains whether enough beetles could be released in a forest to counter the adelgid onslaught and then it will start walking along the branches searching for those hemlock woolly adelgid egg sacs and um, they will actually eat the hemlock woolly adelgids and lay their eggs in the hemlock woolly adelgid. Let me see if we go in here. And ideally the Laracobius predator larvae will hatch inside the hemlock woolly adelgid egg sac and they will, the larvae of the Laracobius will eat the hemlock woolly adelgid eggs. So they actually can kill them even before the adelgid can harm the tree. In this U.S. Forest Service research lab in Asheville, researchers are isolating hemlock branches collected in the forest, which contain adelgids and beetles. They hope to determine just how well the beetles control the adelgid population. We want to see if the predator, the Laracobius predator beetle, ha is within the, within the ovisac of the adelgid, because what happens is the predator beetle not only eats the adelgid, but it will lay its eggs within the, um, within the woolly ovisac of the adelgid. So it'll hatch, some of these will hatch adelgid, and some of them will hatch the Laracobius predator beetle. And we will monitor those containers for Laracobius larvae, the predator larvae, feeding on the adelgid and then dropping into the container. So that gives us a, a sense of how many predator beetles are out there, 
and um, how well are they established in the stand. So why go to all this trouble to protect the hemlock tree? Well, for one, it's a beautiful tree, but when it comes to the forest, it's a foundation species. It determines what lives in this part of the forest. It determines the ecosystem. There's some wildlife that only lives in hemlock trees. Its shade cools the streams. Its chemistry sets the soil. If you lose the hemlock, it changed the ecosystem. Researchers believe an integrated pest management plan is the best way to save the hemlock. The strategy involves using chemical pesticides to kill the adelgids in select areas. It's just not practical in a large forest. But the chemicals would buy the trees some time, during which predator beetles, which eat the adelgids, are released into the branches and then can hopefully save the tree. And so what we hope is that those trees then will be healthier They've got better crowns, they have a better chance of survival than if we had only released predators in the stand. The population of the adelgid reproduces very rapidly and it takes a number of years for the predator beetles, which have to be introduced in small numbers, for them to build their populations. And often what we're finding in the south is that the trees are dying so rapidly that there isn't enough time for the predator population to catch up. And so what we hope with this integrated strategy is that we prolong the life of the trees a little bit with the chemical to give the biological control beetles a chance. Over time, it's hoped that hybrid hemlock trees, which can protect themselves from the woolly adelgid, could be developed to provide a long-term solution and save the hemlock. If we do nothing, hemlock is very likely to go extinct in the, in the southern U.S.